Hello everyone, my name is Tor and welcome or welcome back to Anthropology. Okay, thank you for joining me in today's video. If this is your first time, welcome to the channel. I really hope you enjoy your stay. On this channel, we talk all about things fashion related as well as a variety of cat content. So if you are interested in that type of content, please consider subscribing, like this video and comment anything down below. Okay, so today's video, this one is cat focused. Um, so we will be talking about the differences that I have noticed between a male ragdoll and a female ragdoll. And if you are just getting your first cat and if you wanna get a ragdoll, which one you should get based on the variety of temperaments and the differences that I will outlay in this video. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, please keep watching. I'll put some timestamps down below in case you wanna skip around for different information. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into this video. Also, before we get started, I just wanna send a huge thank you to Fiobach for sponsoring the top in this video. So this is the, the Slim Fit White Long Sleeve Shirt. It is very comfortable. Fiobach did reach out to me and did provide this shirt, but this is not sponsored. This is purely just to show and share with you all. It's a very nice material, it's very soft, has just a small little tag there. It's very nice and form-fitting, very comfortable, really, really like it. So again, thank you for Firebach. I'll put some links down below. Okay, now let's get into this video. So males and females, and in terms of humans, you know, we try to say that everyone is equal, but in terms of cats, you know, there are some differences. And when it comes to ragdolls, the differences can be seen. And from what I've seen online, is what has also been reflected in my own life as someone that has two ragdolls, one male, Mr. Polar Bear, and one female, Mrs. Lynx. So that's what we're gonna get into. So the first thing that really um, emphasizes the difference is size. Ragdolls are large cats by nature, but the males are more or less double in terms of weight um, than the females. So Lynx right now is around 10 pounds and she's three years old. They get up to between 10 to 15 pounds for females and between 20 to like 25 pounds for males, roughly between up to four and a half kilos, four if we're, if we're gonna do uh, the metric system for females and up to nine to 10 kilos for males. So there is quite a big difference in terms of weight. In terms of length and height, I guess, I'm gonna be pulling centimeters. So the average male is between 43 and 53 centimeters from tip to tail and the average female is between 40 and 46 centimeters. So there is quite a good difference there. In addition, the height, um, males are between 23 and 28 centimeters and females get to between 20 to 25 centimeters. So they are a bit smaller in terms of height and definitely you can tell it in terms of length. So to start off, the male cats are larger. Um, as you can see, they're heavier. When I pick up PB, he's only just a year. So this is PB. He's only a year old, and when I pick him up, he is basically the same, ow, oh, basically the same weight. If not, he is more weight than Lynx. So that's the one thing in terms of size. Now, that doesn't really impact your day-to-day -day or like how you'll interact with the cat. It's just something to note. Males are larger, females are smaller. Now, with that comes their temperament. So males overall, and this is shown with PB as well. They're more active, they're more rambunctious, they're more playful, they are louder, their presence is known. When you have a male ragdoll, they, they're they vocal. They're gonna scream, they're gonna be playing, they're gonna be jumping all around. Like the zoomies are like a constant with these guys. So male ragdolls are definitely more active. They, they're more playful they run around more and they're more loud, whereas females tend to be quieter, a bit more shy. And I noticed when it comes to play, PB will attack or play with anything that remotely moves or is remotely interesting to him, whereas Lynx requires a significant more amount of stimulation, like she needs to really get into it, she needs to play. Like when she plays, she really needs to be focused and she's much more intentional when she strikes, um, because obviously that's like part of how cats play. PB will just, whack his arms around wherever, Lynx will be much more thoughtful when she plays. So the other part is um, the kneading aspect, you know, making the biscuits, opening the bakery. What we've noticed with PB, and I don't know how much of this is just personalities, but with PB, he opens the bakery multiple times a day, but they're for shorter periods of time and he doesn't get as into it. 
Whereas Lynx will come and she will do kneading um, maybe like once a day, once or once or twice, like once every few days, but it'll be for like 20 to 30 minutes at a time. Like she really gets into it enough so that she closes her eyes and everything. Like she really gets into it. So what I've noticed, um, which translates across, you know, various aspects of their life is that Lynx and just being a female, she's much more intentional with her time, much more intentional with what she does, um, but she does it more selectively. And this comes to affection as well. Um, whereas PB, he's much more open with his time, much more open with what he does, but he does it um, more frequently and with less, I don't want to say intentionality, but with less intensity, potentially is the right word. So this also comes into their sociability. So males um, have been known, and I've seen this as well, to be more social, especially with strangers. So they're much more likely to come up to strangers, much more likely to interact with people around the house. Whenever we have people in the house, people will be much more likely to interact with them, greet them, you know, want to play with them. Whereas Lynx, she's like, see ya, don't want to know you. Much less attached to the people that come and go. And Lynx and I guess females as a whole are more selective, you know, where there's the idea that cats like pick a person. If you're like a two person household, it's more likely that a female will be more selective and pick one person over the other. Whereas male ragdolls and male cats as a whole have been known to pick or to be less selective where they give their affection. I don't know what this could mean or where this could come from, but that's what we've noticed as well. Lynx is much less sociable than PB. Now for context, we got Lynx during the pandemic and in BC when there was the pandemic, the government shut us down for six months after we had just got her. So none of our friends were able to actually see her until she was six months old. Whereas with PB, we got him and like a week later our friends were over. So it could be that he was socialized in a significantly different way than Lynx, which could lead to this type of difference in sociability. But that is something that I've also read. I'll include um, an article down below which sort of outlines everything I'm talking about, but I'm also speaking from my own empirical views and what I have experienced owning one male and one female ragdoll cat. So the other part, I guess, is around diet and eating. So males, in our experience, PB is a glutton. He eats like there is no tomorrow. He has never seen a bowl of food that he didn't want to eat. So much so that Lynx is a bit more shy when it comes to food. Um, so if I put something down, especially in the beginning when we got PB, and I touched on this in my um, most recent video that we had of them. If I put two bowls of food down, PB would eat his and then he would go to eat hers without even finishing his own. And then Lynx would become deterred and she would leave. So in that case, he is more of a glutton. He also eats more, he's way more. He's got a little bit of a pooch, he's got a little bit of a belly, whereas Lynx does not. She's very svelte, very slim. So that is one thing as well. Males are more gluttonous, they wanna eat more. So I guess in terms of my recommendations from this information and what you do with it, Females overall tend to be a bit calmer, a bit more selective, um, generally have a quieter and more um, calming presence, I will say, whereas males, more sociable, more active, more rambunctious. We used to say PB's like a little puppy because he sort of acted like one, whereas Lynx was definitely more of like a chill cat vibes. So depending on what you're after and depending on what you're looking for, this could influence your decision. Obviously, these things are not set in stone and each cat will come with their own personality. But if you want a cat that's more quiet, that's more sort of just there, will be very cuddly with one person, very selective with one person, like for example, Lynx only really needs with me, she doesn't really need with my partner Robin, then I would go for a female. If you want a cat that's more sociable, more rambunctious, more active, I would then say go with a male. In terms of all the other things that come with you know they're pretty much the same they're they're both cats so like feeding litter um playtime none of that really changes but um oh one other thing i wanted to add in terms of play if you do by chance have two so when we were getting our second one we were like okay do we get another female do we get a male like what do we do and through our research we found that in terms of pairings either a male and a male is ideal or a male and a female is ideal, whereas a female and a female in oftentimes 
um, from what people were saying. They will be more competitive, whereas two males will be more like two bachelors together. I don't know why this may be. It could be that if two female cats choose the same person, it could be like drama that way. Whereas like Lynx and PB, they are similar, but they are different at the same time. And two males apparently are the most sociable, are the most active, tend to have the best uh, relationships as two cats. Now, this is not a general rule of thumb. This is just sort of what's spoken about casually in relation to what you should get. When we spoke to the breeder about this, she said, you know, like, it won't really matter at the end of the day, but we did end up going with a male and PB was the only male in his litter. So that's what happened because of our research, because of what we found, we didn't want there to be too much competition. Um, so getting a male was like our only option given that we had Lynx first and she was a female. So do with this information what you will. I hope it helps somebody, you know, make a decision on what type or what gender of cat to get. Um, as I mentioned before, cats will come with their own personality. So everything I said in this video is subject to that cat and it's based off of what I've seen when I was researching, as well as what I've experienced when I've owned one of each. Um, in terms of grooming, it's exactly the same. But yeah, it's just in terms of personality, males seem to be much more active, much more sociable, whereas females are much more calm and more selective in their social, um, I guess, experience. So thank you all for watching. Don't forget to check out Fiobuck below. They make a variety of different active wear. Oh, I got a bunch of fur on me. But yeah, it's very comfortable shirts. Thank you again for Firewalk for sending me this shirt. I'll link it down below. And um, yeah, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye, guys.